Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 31st. This is going to be a little different. This is going to be a single subject TDD report. I'm going to do possibly another two or three of these during the summertime because there's been subjects I've wanted to touch on and I kind of needed the time of the whole show. And this is based on um, an original idea and then also an email sent to me by my buddy Tony Lenz Kapoff. And the original article that he sent was why children can't see what's right in front of them and the ability or the lack of ability to have peripheral attention. And it also brings to mind uh, the other side article because it's a side link to this article. But meanwhile, I'll touch on this. This article is about how children up until the age of about 14 don't have a really good peripheral awareness. So it's not like sometimes they're really ignoring you if their attention is focused in one area, but their cognitive ability and their brain development just isn't at a type of advanced enough uh, area, advanced enough stage to be able to recognize certain things for They give an example here of a child getting ready to walk across the street and zipping their coat up and their attention is so much on zipping their coat up that they're not even aware of traffic coming from the side. And I guess this is confirmed in independent tests, but even more interesting after you read this article is if you scroll down, there's a little side link called basketball counting. And this is one of those tricks of perception that really fooled me bad when I first saw it. I uh, saw this thing too, and what you do is you watch a video um, I saw the one that I'm going to give you the second link to, but I'll, I'll tell you, if you don't want to spoil it, don't go to the second link. Go to the one underneath here called the first link when you look in the description for the various links. Otherwise, unless you want to just spoil it for yourself. But I watched the original video of this basketball team, and what you want to do is they're passing two different basketballs. There's guys in white uniforms and guys in dark uniforms and they're passing basketballs back and forth and you're supposed to pay attention to just the one team and how many passes they make and about 80 percent of the people are able to count how many passes the one team makes but they're not able to perceive something that's going on because of the fact they're concentrating so much and I don't want to say much more than that and spoil it from anybody but it really gives you an idea of how 80% or better of the population can be totally blind to something that would seem very obvious. In fact, when they're, showed it, when they're shown it in the second showing of the basketball game, they just almost believe that it's a different video, that they haven't even watched the same video again. So I'm telling you right now, if you don't mind skipping over and being spoiled, go to the one called the second link. Otherwise, go to the one called the first link and take the test yourself and see how your perception is. It totally blew me away. And... Uh, the next part of the, the visual perception has to do with color, and I come up with this because this is something I've been thinking about since I was in my 20s. I had a, when I first needed glasses, um, I don't need glasses now because I have my eyes operated on, but before when I first needed glasses, my doctor was not only an optometrist, he was also an ophthalmologist. And not only that, he was really into this, the research and science part of uh, vision. So um, I just happened to be talking to him. I, I love talking to doctors and nurses and especially people like that if they're also science geeks too, and most of them are. So we were talking about color perception and the fact that I read an article in this uh, photography magazine that I brought to show him about how color can also be perceived wrong, especially if it's in context of other colors surrounding it. You can think you're seeing one color when you're not, and it also said that it estimates that somewhere around 50% of what you're actually seeing is not like a camera. It's not what your eyes are actually picking up. It's just an interpretation or an illusion that your brain is creating to make sense. Uh, one of the other reasons why optical illusions work so well is the fact that it's not, it's not just a, a camera. Our eyes are not functioning like a camera. It's a a computational system to where our brain is putting together a lot of it. And I wanted to show you this one, and I'll just show you a little bit. This is a Bo Lotto from a TED Talk. And if you want to see the whole thing, I would encourage you to see the whole thing. But I'm just going to do a little section just for um, visual reference. If you look at this cube here, this is a Rubik's Cube, and if you look at the top of the cube in the middle, there's a chocolate brown looking square, and then if you look off to the side in the shadow, you will see what looks like an orangish yellow square, a real bright orangish yellow, and then the chocolate one on the top. Well, if I actually run this just a little bit, you'll see here, you'll see it changes, and now both squares are actually the same exact color. There is no color difference. And I can even show you other versions. I'll give you a link to another video called Color Relativity, How Context Changes Colors, which shows that same Rubik's Cube, and they actually take it a few other ways out of context and take it and separate it out so that you can see 
that definitely they're not trying to fool you or anything like that, that both of those squares, the top chocolate brown one that looks that way and the side orangish yellow one are basically exactly the same color. I mean, there's no difference whatsoever. So if you will get a chance to check that out too. What, what that reminds me of, and I could not find this because it's such an old documentary, but they had this kind of uh, painting with different colored rectangles and they focused mainly on the one kind of muddy looking or dull looking pink rectangle among the other colors. I mean, it was just uh, various, all the different colors, primary colors and pastels and stuff like that. And they focused on this muddy pink color. And then what they did was they took a cardboard with just a cutout and put it over the picture to where only the muddy pink one was showing. And then what they did was they changed the external light source to where it looked about like a medium green color. And you could see it there while it was covered. You could see that that rectangle had looked a, an absolute medium green color, like grass green. And then they pull the, the paper away, the cardboard away where they cut out, and then you see all the colors again. And right before your very eyes, what looked like a green rectangle comes back to a pink rectangle, that same kind of uh, muddy looking pink. And then they cover it back up again and show you again. You know, it's been changed to green because of the light reflection. But in the context, your eyes want to turn it from green back to pink again because that's the original color context compared to the other colors. So um, that is kind of neat and something I wanted to kind of talk about a little bit. And the last one, I've been trying to find this, but the BBC have been pulling this down as fast as I can find it. And it's an experiment called uh, the color test for the Hemba tribe. There's this tribe in Africa that because of the fact, and, and this is in the context, it's not just the Hemba tribe, but it, it works with other people and other cultures too. Depending on what names you have for colors can also affect what you actually see the color as and what colors you're able to detect and what other ones you have more difficulty detecting. Unfortunately, because they keep pulling it wherever it is, I can't get the video to play for you to see the video, but I'll give you a link that has the, the video on top that will not function. But if you scroll down, and this is on boingboing.net, if you scroll down, it gives the essential parts. You'll see, when you first scroll down, you'll see this circle of green squares. And there's how many of them? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve of these green squares. And believe it or not, one of these green squares, one of the Himba tribe members, can see it being very different than the others. I could not detect it myself. And as a matter of fact, the author had to actually use Adobe Illustrator and actually look at each one of these green squares to see which one, just by the red, green, blue values, which one was different. And if you look at the number values, it is quite different. And if you want me to help you cheat, it's actually the top left square, not the very two top ones. But if you go down one to the left, it's that green square there. And I can't tell the difference myself, but evidently these Himba tribe members can tell the difference real easy. They hardly ever miss. It's just very easy for them to see. But let's scroll down to the next picture and you'll see a computer screen and you'll see uh, this girl, she's sitting in front of it. Um, she's the girl in the video that you can no longer see. But anyway, if you look at it yourself through, I guess, what you would call through our Western eyes, you can see that there's one turquoise blue among all the green squares, the same 12 green squares, except for there's only 11 of them that look green to us and the 12th one in the uh, lower left, but one square down from the uh, one on the top looks very different to us. I mean, that looks just blue, blue, but believe it or not, for the Hemba tribe, very few of those people can tell the difference in that color. It's a very difficult thing for them to be able to pick that one of those colors is different. And they believe it's just because of the fact of the language and the way they learn colors by, by the language itself makes your, makes your eyes and your brain not able to perceive the color. So... I just wanted to get in a little bit of that, and it was kind of cool. I thought when I was younger that my ophthalmologist eye doctor um, was going to write, write a research paper, and some of the material that I gave him was going to actually help him with his research paper. And uh, in his opinion, although I don't know how you could ever classify this, I don't know if there's a test that's classified this, but he says he doesn't have a problem with believing that about 50% of what you believe you're seeing is actually stuff that is created by your brain and not actually your eye functioning just as a camera. And to me, uh, especially the color effect too, because the wavelengths are hitting your eye just exactly the same as the color should be, just whatever your whatever the color value should be, but yet your brain can see it. Uh, if, you, if you actually look, go back to that TED Talk and watch the whole TED Talk with that one guy that's got the uh, Rubik's Cube, that did the Rubik's Cube illusion, he actually shows you to where shades of gray in context of other colors can actually all of a sudden looks, look like it's got a color to it, even though it's basically just plain old gray. But in the context of other colors, your mind actually gives that gray an actual color value itself. 
and it'll really amaze you really if you get a chance to see this so anyway I thought I would be uh, I thought it would be something nice and different to do just a single subject TDD report for a change and let me know if you like these um, I will still get back definitely be doing the majority of them as varieties uh, give you plenty of technology gadgets gizmos astronomy nature biology whatever but just a few of them I want this summer to be a single subject so we can concentrate on that and if you have any ideas for single subjects you'd like to get into um, I think um, there's another one that I want to get into my friend Dave said he wants to get in history of gadgets for example he brought up tractors so I think that's what I'm going to get into in the future too is maybe the the history of mechanical gadgets such as tractors uh, even the John Deere story about tractors is pretty interesting just as a story in and of itself so take care everybody that's it for this week I will catch you next week <laughs>